Hey everybody, welcome back to the Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? A few years ago, I did a video on these Ledbetter Beef Tenderloin Bacon Wrap Filets. And the title of that video was, Are My Meats Real or Are They Glued? Well, we provided more than enough evidence to show you that they were indeed meat glued tenderloins. But in today's video, we're not going over that information again. That would be redundant. But I will leave a link to the video in the description of this video so you can see how we determined that they were indeed meat glued steaks. So today I have a little bit more research to do on these Ledbetter bacon wrapped tenderloin fillets to show you, the people, what we're buying and what we're consuming and why we shouldn't buy it and we shouldn't consume it. First of all, when I did the first video on the Ledbetter bacon wrapped tenderloin filet steaks, actually, let me rephrase that. I shouldn't call these a steak because they're not steaks. Anyways, we already determined that in the previous video. And again, if you want to watch it, the link is in the description box. I guess with inflation, the price of everything goes up, even crappy meat. Back in 2019, these six ounce tenderloin filets were $5.99. Today, they're $7.99. Now in this video, I was not going to address the ingredients or the nutrition facts. But both have slightly changed since 2019. So here's a list of ingredients. And here's the nutrition facts. Per six ounce tenderloin, there's 330 calories, 20 grams of total fat, 11 grams of saturated fat, 95 milligrams of cholesterol, 260 milligrams of sodium, no carbohydrates, no fiber, no sugars, and 34 grams of protein. The main thing I want to address in this video is the amount of solution added to these processed meats. A solution can be like an open can of worms. It can have all kinds of crap in it. And quote unquote, a solution isn't necessarily always a bad thing. But in this case, I think it is. A turkey can have a solution added to it via an injection, AKA a brine. But these tenderloins with a solution added to them is what I really consider a formed meat slurry concoction. And in my eyes, that's exactly what they are. And the manufacturer is truthful, but they're very misleading. And right here, it says made from 100% beef tenderloins. You can interpret that however you like, but I interpret that as each steak is made from the trimmings of tenderloins and then glued together with the gelatin. Actually, that's not my interpretation. Just go ahead and take that to the bank. That's the truth. Now listen to me just for a minute. I'm going to put on my geeky glasses and try to do some math here. And try not to sound dumb when I'm done. Right there on the label, it says contains up to a 15% of a flavor enhancing solution. So 15% of six ounces is roughly one ounce. So you're really getting a five ounce steak for $7.99 and one ounce of water. Now let's break out a secret weapon and something that I've never used on my channel. And I think it's going to be a very important tool we use in the future. That way you, the people get to see exactly if you're getting what you're paying for. And that secret weapon is a food scale. Why didn't I think about this before? Now the scales are obviously made for children because you're supposed to be able to set them for ounces, grams, and units. And me, being the genius I am, couldn't figure out how to do that. So we made it work just by using the units. So I know I don't need to explain this to you, the people, because you're not idiots like I am. So let me just explain it so I understand what I'm doing. Because I know there's a scooter out there just waiting to tell me that I'm an idiot. Scooter, you don't need to tell me I'm an idiot. I know that already. Don't waste your breath. So let's just put this in layman's terms. 
and start off with one pound, which would be 16 ounces, which would be one unit. Eight ounces would be 0.5 units, and so on and so forth. Now if the scales are correct and the meat measurements correct, each steak should weigh 0.375 units, or if you want to round it up to 0.38 units. And that should be the steak without the packaging. So the first steak with the packaging weighed 0.35 units. So Houston, we already have a problem. The second steak with the packaging weighed 0.41 units. The third steak with the packaging weighed 0.40 units. Now I took the steaks out of the packaging and placed them on a paper towel and let them rest for about 30 minutes. And you can see the amount of moisture that came out of them. Here's the first tenderloin that weighed 0.35 units in the package and now it weighs 0.29 units out of the package and after resting on a paper towel. Here's the tenderloin that weighed 0.41 units in the package and now it weighs 0.35 units. And finally for the tenderloin that weighed 0.4 units in the package, now it weighs 0.36 units. I cooked each steak until they reached an internal temperature of 130 degrees. The first steak I pan fried in beef tallow. The second steak I grilled. Here's the steak that we pan seared that originally weighed 0.29 units and now it weighs 0.20 units. And here's the steak that we grilled that originally weighed 0.36 units and now it weighs 0.23 units. Now here's the steak that we air fried that originally weighed 0.41 units and now it weighs 0.24 units. Now as we go through this video, realize I know I'm an idiot, but I'm not stupid. And I know that there's a scooter out there chomping at the bit and salivating like a rabid dog. Uh, well, uh, Mr. Larry, I'm here to tell you that when you cook meat, it all loses moisture. Duh. And I realize that scooter, you blithering idiot. But those are natural juices, not juices that have been added to the meat to increase profit. And now, a light bulb just turned on into my head for a new video. And now, very quickly, we're going to go through and cut up these steaks to show you, the people, what they actually look like inside. But viewer discretion is advised. These are almost as bad as the chef's requested meats. And as you're going to be able to see, with all three steaks, regardless of how you cook them, and even though they were all cooked to exactly the same finished temperature, the amount of added solution to the meat made it impossible to properly cook the steaks and they all simply steamed. Here's what a fresh, properly cooked filet mignon should look like when it's done. Now, here's the tragic results of processed meats. Besides the one ounce of water added to each so-called filet, the directions of the meat grain look like a two-year-old scribbled on a piece of paper. That is obviously the result of several pieces of meat being glued together. Now we all know that I'm not a cape crusader in real life, but oftentimes I do play the fictional character on YouTube for you, the people. I consumed some of these high-risk foods just for you so you didn't have to. Thankfully and fortunately, I had no ill effects from consuming these awful products. And although I didn't feel physically bad, I felt bad for my tongue and my palate and my stomach. So as a reward to my palate, my tongue and my stomach and myself, I gave us all the perfect treat, especially while being on the carnivore diet. A 16 ounce ribeye steak cooked medium rare with a tablespoon of butter on top. And for the record, the ribeye steak 
was all natural and it was on sale for $8.99 a pound. And one last thing I might add, it was delicious. Unlike the Ledbetter Bacon Wrap Tenderloin Filets. So here's my final thoughts on Ledbetter's Bacon Wrap Beef Tenderloin Filet. And I'm going to sum it up in two words and one suggestion. Garbage ripoff. And if you see them in a store near you, run. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.